I see everyone in the comments. I want to welcome everyone in and of course, welcome everyone that will catch the replay later on on YouTube. Hello, Miss Lori and Sherry. Always rejoicing. Rachel, Irma Gail. Hello, hello, Sue, Margo. There's Brenda. Hello, Brenda. Crafts on the move. I love that name. Hello, hello, everyone. So we are in the new craft room, still working on getting all the kinks worked out. That's okay. I'm so excited because I got my brand new camera set up. So we're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. Hello, Mindy Egan. Mindy helped me with my camera today. I'm so excited. Mindy, you're going to have to text me and tell me how everything looks. Hello, Jasmine and Sherry and Jen and Paula. Hello, Julia. All right, you guys. So I'm going to be creating tonight. I'm going to be doing some stenciling. I'm pulling out a uh, just a one layer stencil, just a good old fashioned stencil, some fall sentiments. I'm going to pull in some fall colors again because we're all dreaming of cooler weather, right? And then I have a new product to me that we are going to get at honeybeestamps.com. It's another waffle flower product that you may have seen that is supposed to be great for stenciling. We're gonna kind of unpackage it together. I'm gonna use it with the stencil and we're gonna try it out. Hello, hello, hey Keiko and Connie and let's see here, Sherry, hello. Okay, so let's go down to the desk view and I want you guys to tell me in the comment if everything looks nice and clear I'm hoping that the color is okay. I'm still working on the balance of colors and all that good stuff. And I've still got work to do, but we'll get all the kinks worked out. So I'm hoping that everything is going to be nice and bright and really crisp and clear for you guys to see. Hello, hello. Hey, Connie. Hello from Spartanburg, my neighbor in Spartanburg. Yes, it looks wonderful. Good. Yay. That is what we are going for. We want everything to be nice and clear. And of course, you know, when I get my lights hung up where they're going to go and all that good stuff, we'll have to work out all the kinks again, but we're on the road here. Okay, so I'm going to use this sentiment set tonight called Sweater Weather. And I know the packaging is going to give me a little bit of a glare sometimes, so I'll hold it up. So Sweater Weather we're all dreaming of fall, so I'm going to pull out one of these sentiments, and of course, I'll pull out one of the coordinating dies, and then this is the stencil that I'm going to use. This is the, and I'd never say this correctly, it is the damask or damask, I'm not for sure how to pronounce that, but I'm going to use this, and we're going to do a fall card lots of yummy ink blending. And then this is what I'm kind of excited about. I know you guys have probably seen this on social media, maybe YouTube videos or something like that. And uh, Melissa has ordered these to carry in the shop with the stencil mats. So let's go ahead and let's like break this puppy open. I have not opened these, you know, in setting up my new craft room with the move and all that good stuff. So this is going to be new to me, maybe new to you guys. I know you've probably seen it. So this is the sticky. It's not really sticky though. It's more like a, um, like a clear stamp. And so I'm going to like very gently pull this back because I can cover it back up when I'm not using it to try to keep, you know, all the fuzzies and, you know, little things that get on our mats and on our things. Okay, so this is a silicone, just like our clear stamp. It does have the little guides that go with that if you want to, you know, use the guides to place your papers and things like that. I'm not going to use that this evening. I'm just going to use it to like hold all my goodies down as I stencil. And so I'm going to kind of do like I did Monday night, but just do a different technique. So I am going to ink blend on both craft cardstock and then white cardstock and do the same stencil, same colors, but we're going to kind of look and see what we like, what we get with this technique. Okay. And I just happen to see this technique, and I'm sure um, some of you have probably seen it in the past. But first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stick down my little piece of paper, and I can even kind of butt this up in the corner so that little 
uh, silicone or um, photopolymer, I should say, uh, doesn't kind of slide around on me. And I am going to take three fall colors. So I'm going to use peeled paint, wild honey, and crackling campfire. I thought that that was kind of a pretty mix. And I think maybe I'll do one and kind of do like the ink blendy little blobs. And then one that is more of a striped effect. And then we'll see what we get. But we're going to start out just by adding ink to our paper and then we're going to stencil. Okay, so let's start out with, it may get a little bit muddy, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to start out with the crackling campfire. So we're going to kind of experiment. I'm going to get my brush all really nice and inky here. And then I'm just going to ink down about a third of the way because I've got three colors. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but look at how that photopolymer is holding that piece of paper. Like it's not going anywhere. No tape, no magnets, no anything. Okay, so that's really good and juicy. So that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and tell me in the comments over here. I'm going to be looking here. Tell me in the comments if you have tried yet one of these what are they calling it grip mat i'm calling them sticky mats but it's called the real name of it is grip mat tell me if you have tried that yet okay next color i think i'm going to go from the orange into the kind of orangey mustardy yellow of wild honey and i'm going to blend that in and then maybe we'll go into the green Let's see here. Hello, hello, everyone. Very nice how it holds the paper. I know. And, you know, suppose like you guys are seeing me use it for the first time. It's uh, you can use it in your Misty. You know, um, my friends here, you've seen me use like those inexpensive, like little Cricut silhouette mats in my Misty. Well, this is supposed to take the place of those and it's reusable. We can just kind of wipe it down. Um and I'm going to start blending up into that crackling campfire. But it's supposed to take the place of, you know, trying to uh, use other things. Use like sticky mats or tape or magnets or whatever to help us out. Especially when we're ink blending, you know, little die cuts or little pieces of paper or like our lovely layers on this. I can't wait to try like lovely layers on this because it's gonna hold all those little pieces in place while we're having fun and while we're ink blending. Okay, so peeled paint is next. I'm gonna start way down here at the bottom and then I'm gonna blend up. It may get a little bit muddy but that's okay because we're going for fall colors and fall colors are a little muddy sometimes. It may turn a little bit funny, but no, it doesn't look like it's going to. I'm going to get that good and juicy. And then I may pull that wild honey back in just to do a little bit of a crossover so we can get that all nice and pretty. Let's get it really deep and rich down here at the bottom. And then I've got my wild honey. Let's go ahead and kind of pull it over, pull it down into the green, and let's pull out some more ink here. Let's see, love the color. Now I'm thinking of cracking. I know, I love crackling campfire. It's my favorite orange. I use it a lot. Okay, that's looking pretty, that's looking pretty good. Okay, it's looking a little messy right here but with our little technique that we're doing tonight it's going to be all good to go okay so this is where we're going to bring in the stencil so i've got my color down underneath all good to go i'm going to bring in my stencil and just kind of make sure that the pattern it doesn't have to be perfectly look at that sticking perfectly lined up but i want to make sure that my pattern is going to go from edge to edge. Look at it sticking. Wow. It's like having a piece of tape down. Okay. So, and I'm going to kind of center 
my pattern here and then I can press that into the photopolymer underneath the little grip mat, just like so. Okay, now I'm going to go over this with gathered twigs over the top. So you're probably thinking, you know, why in the world would you cover all that up? But then when we pull it back, we're going to have that really pretty colorful fall design on the underneath side. Okay, so I'm going to get my brush. This is a brand new brush. I'm going to get it really good and juicy because we're about to go to town here with some ink blending. Okay, and you're going to see that uh, damask or damask pattern start popping out here in that really rich gathered twigs brown. And then I'm going to have you guys help me choose again, like what, which one we do, because I'm going to ink blend and pretty much do the same thing on craft too. And we're going to see what we get. Okay. Are you ready for the magic reveal? This is always the fun part, right? So I'm going to release it from the grip mat. Let's see here. And it is grippy. Let's peel it back. Are you seeing how pretty that design is on there? How cool is that? Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I'm actually going to use my little spatula to kind of release my background from this little grip mat. Okay. And then let's hold it up and then let's take a close up view. That turned out really pretty, I think. And then we're going to put our beautiful uh, sentiment kind of here in the center. But look how pretty that is. All right. I'm going to set this aside and let it dry while we play with the craft cardstock next. So let's see how well this grip mat cleans up. So it should wipe down pretty well. Let's get it all wiped down and you can hear it squeaking. We're going to get it squeaky clean here. Just like that. And let me get the fuzzies from my little towel off of here. And then I am going to lay my stencil. I'm actually going to lay it over here and give it a wipe down since I've already cleaned my little grip mat. Give it a little wipe down here. And I always like to, let me kind of move it over. I always like to lay like my cloth or an extra cloth down like so. And then I kind of cover it up. And it's going to help catch all the ink that goes underneath the stencil. It's going to help catch some of that. And my little cloth here, it has glue. It has all kinds of good stuff on it. Okay, I can lay my stencil aside now and kind of let it dry. And then let's play with the craft cardstock now. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to lay this down. It's still really sticky, even after me wiping it down. Okay, now I want you to tell me in the comments, should I do little blobs and kind of move the color around? Or should I do sections of color in thirds like I did on the white cardstock? So look, while I'm getting my colors sorted out here, you guys tell me in the comments what you think I should do. Should we do it different this time or should we do it in uh, the same kind of pattern as we did this on the white? And we're going to see how it turns out on the craft cardstock. Let's see here. Blobs, everybody. Let's see. What is the best, best craft paper to use? Naomi, I use Nina Desert Storm. So it's the same like brand paper is as the white cardstock that everyone uses to cope it color and things like that. It's not as expensive as the good white paper. So look up Nina Desert Storm, but you can even you can cope it color on this. I've done that. Colored pencils work beautifully on this. Ink blending, all the things. It's a really good craft cardstock. Let's see here. Dave is voting for blobs. Hello, Dave. 
let's say thirds so you can compare it to the white. That's a good, that's a good idea too. Blobs, same thing. So we go, okay, same thing. I think that that's a good idea. Same thing so we can compare. All right. So I'll let you guys do that again. You guys are always great helpers. So I'm going to do the crackling campfire again. And so I'm going to pull in my brush here. We're going to get it really good and juicy because again, I want it really rich across the top of here. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit further. Let's get a little more ink right up in there. And that looks pretty darn good. That is pretty. Okay. Next color is wild honey. So let's go with some wild honey here. I'm going to get my brush all nice and juicy. And I'm going to start out kind of in the center of this piece of paper. And then I'm going to blend out from there. That kind of helps me eyeball it. to see. And I think this is going to be just like Monday night where the one on white paper turned out a lot more like vibrant, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up. Okay, let's put the lid on that so I don't make a mess. And then we have our pretty like olivey color of peeled paint. So and again, I'm going to start off of the paper down here so I can get it really dark. And then I'm going to start working my way up into that wild honey and kind of blending those together. You can see here, we were talking about different types of craft cardstock, how well ink blends on this. It really does a beautiful job. And then I'm going to take the wild honey brush and just kind of marry those two together a little bit. And I've got a little fuzzy. There we go. Let's marry that crackling campfire and the wild honey. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, I still think I need to work on the colors in my camera. Okay, now here's the question. On this for the stenciling part, I used gathered twigs, which would I would say is a medium brown, but I also pulled out walnut stain for the craft just in case, which is, you can see how much richer of a brown that is. It's hard to kind of see on the camera, but this is going to be really dark. So should I do walnut stain or should we stick with like the original and do gathered twigs? So let me know what you guys think in the comment. Are we going darker or are we going to stick with that medium brown? Let's see here. Twigs. I see some twigs. Walnut stain. Kelsey is out going outside the box here. Hey, okay. Walnut. Let's see here. Gathered twigs. Stick with gathered twigs. Darker. Okay. Well, we did the same pattern on this one. So maybe we do darker with the top coat so we can kind of mix it up just a little bit. Okay. So we get like the best of, of both worlds here. All right. Again, with the little fuzzies. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use that grip mat. And I'm going to set that down into place. Even with the ink underneath it, it's done. It's going pretty well. All right, I've got a brand new brush. I needed some new brown brushes. Get that really good and juicy. I need to work on it some more. All right, that's looking good. All right, here we go. Woo! That's going to be pretty. It's going to be a toss-up here. Here we go. We're working our way down. Wow, that is rich. It looks like melted chocolate. We go give it a little smooth out okay now let me cover this so I don't stick my hand in that mess all right here's the reveal so here we go 
Wow. That is really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna set my stencil aside and I'll clean it when we're finished. And then let's go ahead and let's peel this back very gently. And then I'm gonna move my little grip mat. I'm gonna clean it when we're finished. It's just like a stamp. So even though I leave the ink on it, it's gonna be just fine to set aside. And then now we've got the one on craft. And then we have the one we did on white paper. Do you see how the colors in this one the, on the white is more vibrant? Just like the card that we kind of put together on um, Monday night. Let's set these down. Let's kind of move this over here. And you can see how all those colors kind of played differently on the paper. I love this one is really rich and dark. If I hold these up, maybe you can see the difference between the medium brown and the really, really dark brown. Do you see the difference where this one almost on screen looks black, but it's not quite, not quite black. It's a really rich chocolate brown. Okay, so we've got those all finished. So now let's go ahead and set this aside. Let's work on our sentiment, okay? So we're going to pull out that sweater weather stamp set. So this is a good one. This is a, a, a good stamp set that has a lot of really nice big focal point sentiment. So if you like to do like ink blended cards and have just a nice big sentiment, this is a good uh, stamp set for that. Okay, so let's see here. White cardstock or... Do I do it on white to make it pop? Let's see here. Hmm. This is the dilemma. Or craft. Hmm. Okay. Let's get this out. I'm going to use the fall is in the air. I think that'll be pretty. Um, or I can use any of them, really. Let's see. A crisp chill of fall refreshes all. May our hearts be full of thanks and giving. That would be a pretty one for, you know, Thanksgiving-ish season. Cold weather, warm hugs, sweater weather, or fall is in the air. Let's look here. So that's kind of what it's going to look like on there. Do you like this one or should we choose like one of the big ones? I think I like this one. And here's here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to tell you my thought process behind this. Is because when you stamp it, I'm not going to stamp it directly on the background. I'm going to stamp it and use the coordinating die. So you know the coordinating die is going to take up some of the space of our beautiful inked background. And so a lot of times if I've got this beautiful ink background, I don't want to cover it up with a big die cut, if that makes sense. I want that all that ink blending to show. So I think I'm going to keep this kind of smaller size sentiment. That way, all the way around it, we're seeing all the pretty inky stuff that we did. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's how my brain works. I don't know if you guys um, are crazy and thinking stuff like that, but that's how I think about, okay, do I really want to cover up all that pretty ink blending that I just did? I'm going to sit this in here and pick it up. And then I'm going to use some anti-static powder because I think I'm going to heat emboss this in gold just to, you know, bring in that fall feel again. Okay, I've got my embossing ink. Let's see. I love the mat in my Missy. Oh, Linda, I love the mat. You have that mat and you've used it in your Misty. Do you love it? I haven't done that yet. And I can use, because this is a really good chunky sentiment, I can use my pressure tool like that. And while we're chatting here, did you guys know that we have another class coming up in our challenge group? It's over on Facebook and it's called Honeybee Stamps Buzzworthy Challenges. And I'm going to do third time just for good measure here. 
Um, but we're doing masculine birthday cards. And I have done a card and shared a card in there that's blue. But with the, the things that we're going to be doing, you could do it in any color for masculine cards. You know, if you wanted to do blues or greens or browns or, you know, whatever you wanted to do, you could totally do that. Okay, now the trick is to find a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to use this little guy here to catch all of my gold embossing powder. This is my very favorite gold. This is Brutus Monroe Gilded embossing powder. And I'm going to do a little sprinkle, not get too wild here. I'm going to try to catch it. You can see how pretty that's going to be. And then let's do another little shake just for good measure. And do a little tap off. That's cute. I like that kind of wonky font. And then let's see if I can do this without making a total mess. There we go. Set that aside. And then I'm actually going to pull my mat off here. There we go. All right. That's Carrie's favorite embossing powder, too. It is really good. And while this is heating up, let me see if I can find my paintbrush. I'm going to clean up one little mess. Okay, here we go. be able to watch the magic here. And give it a heat up on the back side. There we go. All right. Okay, now we've got this pretty gold sentiment. And I'm going to let that kind of sit and let that do what it needs to do while I pull out my little bitty buzz here. And we got to find that coordinating die that matches. So let me pull that out. And then I've got my little plates ready to go here. And I'm going to give my scrap piece of paper here, if I can get it, a little haircut. And then we can tape this down. Let's see here. I like the gold hand pink waving. I like Gina K gold for detailed sentiments. I have not used her embossing powder. I'm sure it's excellent though. Everything that Gina does is excellent. And from what I know, she's a super nice lady on top of that. So that helps too. It's always nice when we have nice crafters and they're fun to watch. Okay, fall is in the air. So we've got that all good to go. And then I'll pull out my little card bases here. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, now I think we need to decide, are we going really rich and dark? Or are we going bright again like we did the other night? So tell me in the comments what you guys think while I grab my paper trimmer here. Do we go bright or do we go really moody? Let's see, so excited for the new really, it is in August coming up so fast. You guys are going to love it. Let's see here. I love the honey bird word dies. The best, the bright. Bright. Everybody votes for bright. Hello, Bridge. Sorry, Mike. Hello. That's okay. We're glad that you're here. 
All right, here's the card that I created on Monday night. See how well you can see so much better with this camera? Look at all that embossing powder, just shimmer and shine. Okay, so this is where we ink blended and die cut and did the little water spritzies on white cardstock because we did white cardstock on Monday too. What do you guys think? Let's see here. Looking great. Bright. Go with the white. I could do that since I've got white here and I'm going to trim this down a hair. And then I think if I, since I did a white sentiment, I can pop it on to the white card base and it'll really pop off of that white, I think. Okay. So I'm going to save this because I'm going to make another card with this some other time. Or that might even be beautiful for some kind of like a tag or some die cuts or something. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I always like to, let me set that, trim down my ink blended panels. And there's a couple of reasons why I like to do this part. One, do you see where I missed that little spot right there? Well, if I trim it down, I'm going to cut off any of the little edge boo-boos that I might get while I am ink blending. And then I like to have that just a little bit of a border where my card base kind of pops a little bit, or you can see that like it's like it's layered, like we've spent a lot more time doing, you know, layered papers and layered things where really all we did was trim down our little card base. All right, I'm going to set that guy aside and set those aside. And then let's see what we got here. So this, make sure I've got the right side here. And then that is going to pop right off the front of there, like so. And then I can always pop these up with some little adhesive um, foam dots. All right, so let's grab this and my liquid adhesive. I could always pop this up with some kind of um, like foam tape or something like that. But I think we're going to go easy peasy this evening and then just lay that down and then I like to kind of pop it up just a little bit right in front of my eyes where I can kind of shimmy that around a little bit to make sure that it's pretty straight. There we go. Now let's do our sentiment. All right, so I'm going to flip this little guy over and just a couple of dots will do you here. I'm not even going to worry about the little tails. They'll stick up a little bit. There we go. There we go. And then I like to take my tweezers and kind of get it kind of where I want it, but the tweezers help me kind of get my fingers out of the way. And then I can kind of pop that on there. And so we've got a little bit of dimension. And then you know I wouldn't be finished without some pearls. So these are our warm pearls again. I think I'm going to go with the gold that's going to go with our embossing powder. So let me pull out my little thing and then my little die pick here that I use for everything. And then let's just kind of, I can kind of nestle one in there. There, we'll do a little sprinkling here. Cute. And then let's do a couple down in here. And then we're going to compare. We're going to look at our cards. Okay. So here is tonight's card. And then let's take a look at the card that we did on Monday. So using very similar colors, gold embossing powder, 
a nice big sentiment, but totally different kind of techniques that we did here. All right, let's go over here and let me click. Hello. Okay. So you guys tell me in the comments, like, which one do you think is your favorite technique? Did you like the stenciling that we did here? Or do you like the inky blendy and then die cut it with a uh, cover plate? Which one's your favorite one? The stencil is giving total Haunted Mansion at Aaron. You're a Disney adult. I can tell it should have done purple Halloween. So Aaron, you'll have to come back. I'll do a Halloween card coming in uh, when it gets a little more into fall. And I'll, I'll use that for Haunted Mansion because that is amazing. That's a great idea. Let's see. Both cards are beautiful. I like the die cut card. Yeah, it was kind of fun. And you can see better tonight, like all the little drippies and things in the little acorn and in the ink. I just, I love all that kind of stuff and the texture and things. My favorite is the first one. Everybody's liking the die cuts. Let's see here. I need Monday's cover plate. It is called, oh, you had to ask about that. Um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Let's say that and got unboxing powder makes it. It does. It's so fun. All right, you guys. That is it for tonight. So that means it is time for our live giveaway. I'm gonna go over here. I'm just gonna scroll through and kind of randomly stop on one of our friends. And our friend tonight that is the winner is Carrie Jones. Both actually, I like the variety. So I'm thinking that Carrie liked the cards, both cards tonight. So Carrie, if you will email me here at Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I will get you your prize. Our winners from Monday night. I have not sent you your gift card yet, but I will get right on that. I just hit my brain. I have seen your emails and I will send those to you. So I apologize for that. All right, let's see. So thank you. Oh, Lisa was here. Did I, did Lisa choose a winner too? Carrie Jones. Okay. I just saw that Lisa was here, but I didn't think she was here. So hopefully did we do two winners again? Lisa's probably laughing at me. Lisa, Autumn Splendor. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, is, do you see the smileys in there? No, we didn't. Okay. Lisa's like totally laughing at me. I know her like the back of my hand and I can hear her laughing at me. All right, you guys. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be back in the craft room next week with more uh, fun, inky goodness. So I hope you'll join me then and I'll see you next Monday. Bye friends.